It is 22 past the hour. The 2018 midterm elections mark many firsts for women in the U.S. Congress. Ayanna Presley becomes the first black woman elected from Massachusetts to Congress. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in New York at 29 years old becomes the youngest woman ever elected to the House of Representatives. <clears throat> also in Texas, Veronica Escobar and Sylvia Garcia also made history, becoming the first Latinas from that state to represent in the House. And Democrats Rashida Tlaib and Ilan Omar became the first two Muslim women elected to the Congress. Tlaib, an attorney and daughter of Palestinian immigrants, will represent Michigan's 13th district. Omar, who came to the United States as a refugee from Somalia, replaces Congressman Keith Ellison, representing Minnesota's 5th District. So it's so interesting because, you know, some people are like, you know, a little bit back in time, Joe, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they're worried about voting for a woman, you know? Mm -hmm. So in New Jersey, thank God, who, they who, went who, for this so who, helicopter pilot about? named Mike. Mike? Yeah. <laughs> Joining us now, I'll vote for Mike. Democrat elected no. to represent New Jersey's 11th Congressional District. After more than three decades of Republican control, former Navy helicopter pilot and federal prosecutor, Congresswoman elect Mikey Sherrill. <laughs> So I got to ask Mikey the most important, uh, important question. Uh, did you ever train in Northwest Florida? Did you it's go to Whiting? I was in Pensacola and I was it's in Whiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's course, see, that's why she won. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. It. Thank you so How much. How does it feel? It feels great. It why feels did great. you run? Well, you know, after a lifetime of serving my country, after being in the Navy and working as a federal prosecutor, I thought the best way I could continue my service was to run for Congress. I love it. And how much did, um, the answer can be no, but did this presidency play any role in your decision to run? Well, I certainly wanted to continue my service when I saw things like attacks on um, Gold Star families and POWs and women and, uh, you know, religious freedom. But it really was particularly in my district uh, where our congressman oh. wasn't holding. Is it me? Here's the thing about female candidates. They've got long hair. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> God. <laughs> trying to talk through it. You know, I, that's, that's okay. I, 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 I was I saying like you, you had, you had the, 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 the wherewithal to continue just like a Navy <laughs> helo <pilot. I> know. <laughs> landing on a ship in fog. That's, that's, that's what you learned. But go ahead. Um, but it was really in my district where our representative wasn't holding town hall meetings and wasn't meeting with his constituents, that's what really pushed me into the race. I love it. So, so what, what, what's, your, what's your top goal when you, when you get to Congress? What, what, what would you like to see? What direction would you like to see Congress move? I would love to see more bipartisanship. I'll tell you, the things in my district that we've been focused on are tax reform, quality and affordable health care for everyone, and infrastructure spending. But beyond all that, what people tell me again and again is, I just want Congress to work. I just want people to spend more time working for the country and less time fighting with each other. It's gotten really ugly out there. Willie. I'm curious what you would say, Mikey, about the process, because we hear time and time again, who would want to get into politics these days? It's so <laughs> ugly. They dredge up every moment from your past. It's unfair how they frame it. But you dove mm -hmm. in and you've succeeded at it. What would you say to somebody who wants to get into politics? What was the process like for you? Well, you know, I was uh, trying to think of how I could get engaged and, and serve the country again. And a friend said, well, just run for Congress. And I said, oh, gosh, no. <laughs> you know, I, no way. Um, but really, um, once I started thinking about it and what you can really do to serve the country and how we could work harder for a better legislative branch, um, I started to say, you know, I should. And I went up to my husband and I said, um, Jason, I... I think I have to run for Congress. And I, really? I thought that would be the end of it. <laughs> what did he know. say? He said, yeah, yeah. No, and this is a, um, a couple with four kids. Right? See, that's why I thought and, and by the that way, down. By the way, that's a much better start than me, because when I told my dad I was going to run against this Earl Hutto, he said, that's great, Joey. But I'm voting for Earl. Okay. So, so that, that was a good first start. You know, but Dad. I don't like 
like to brag, Joe, yeah. but my He's dad, not. my Republican dad, said that if he had been in my district, he would have voted for by, me. By, by, <laughs> by the way, my dad ended up voting for me. Yeah, I hope but, so. But I think he yeah. did. But, yeah. um, yeah. I mean, it's Earl was a good guy. But but talk about you know I always tell people that are running for the first time you're always so surprised not only by the people that you think are going to help you and support you and they disappear mm. but for every one of those there are 10 people that you have never met before that throw their life into helping you get elected because they believe in a cause bigger than themselves can you talk about how much that meant to you and how much sort of renewed your faith in, it, in democracy? It was wonderful. It was incredibly humbling. And you're exactly right. Renewed my faith in democracy is, is the perfect way to put it. Just the thousands of people that knocked on doors, that made phone calls, that would show up on their off time. People, you know, our union members who worked a really long day and then would get up early on a Saturday morning and go knock on doors for me. It, it was really a, an impressive effort throughout the district. Mm -hmm. So th it, the one thing from last night that I think is great is the, the number of women who are coming to Congress, which I think is going to have potentially a transformative impact on the Congress. How do you see uh, this new coalition of women um, who are now in, this, in the seats uh, representing the country and uh, the wide array of Americans out there? What impact do you think that women can have to move an institution that has become moribund and, and sort of locked in a certain way of behaving, a certain way of looking at legislation, process, and all of that? What impact do you want to have or you think you can have to sort of transform that institution? I think we can have a great effect. I think we can have a transformative effect um, because a lot of us are used to breaking through barriers. I think as women, that's what we've been doing our entire career. And mm -hmm. so to go somewhere, um, to have that challenge before us it, is not daunting. It's sort of par for the course. <laughs> and, and, and how helpful is it that you're going to be working with more and more veterans? Uh, that yeah. it, it, it's, it's hard for a Republican who has served and a Democrat who has served to look across this aisle and go, oh, wait, they're my enemy. No. That's exactly right. It's a band of brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that help the more veterans that get into Congress, the greater hope that we may actually have some comedy? I like to think so. You know, when I was born, over 70% of the House was made up of veterans. Now it's under 20. Well, no longer. It was under 20%. Yes. <laughs> it won't be soon. Uh, yeah. So um, I think we can see more bipartisanship. I, I've told people in my district for months, look, you know, as a Navy helicopter pilot, I never flew Republican missions or Democratic missions. I would have had a very short career. So uh, <laughs> this is something that I do think vets bring to the table, this willingness to work with everyone. So, Maria, we, we've been talking about a lot of big gains for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk about uh, two of the biggest losses out side of, of, of taxes with Beto. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be the state of Florida. Andrew Gillum uh, losing and Bill Nelson losing. It is pretty remarkable when you think about the number of Latinos, the number of Hispanics in the state of Florida, and how abhorrent the president of the United States was in his handling of the Puerto Rican crisis, mm -hmm. that somehow Democrats couldn't carry the day in that state, at least in one of those two marquee races. Did, did Hispanic voters stay at home? How could Donald Trump have won the state of Florida in 18 and or 16 and again in 18? Well, he wasn't on the ballot this time. And oh, Rick he Scott, was. Oh, no. Rick mm -hmm. Scott went to Puerto Rico 20 times right after the hurricane. He was courting the Puerto Rican vote long before. The moment the Puerto Ricans landed on airports, he literally had all the social services, government services there. So they didn't feel that there was a distinction between the person that was on on their side and the Republican Party. And by the case. way, they did both separate themselves. I will say that yes. the one, the bill, the, 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 the one, uh, one time that DeSantis showed political spine mm -hmm. was when he crossed Donald Trump on the number of uh, Puerto Ricans who Exactly who, right, because he was, he was reading the tea leaves. He recognized that the, that election was going to be really, really close. But when we go to see what happened in Texas, Texas, the fact that Beto O'Rourke mm -hmm. came in within striking distance, there is a revolution right now happening in Texas within the Latino vote that is more akin to what happened in California under Pete Wilson than any other state. The fact that Pete Sessions lost, a mm -hmm. you know, 11-term uh, incumbent lost, and mostly to the Latino vote, is huge. But there's not enough infrastructure right now in the Latino vote. In the last, since 2014, there's 4 million new young Latinos that have come of age. 
there's no mechanism right now to actually capture them and get them into the into the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. So it has to be. It has to be calculated, but it also has to be strategic. I would say, though, that what we saw last night, even with the with the progressive movement, is the fact that they all of a sudden, 27 NRA-backed legislators lost. You had Medicaid expansion in three red states, and you also saw an expansion of really gerrymandered districts all of a sudden up for grabs because seven state houses all of a sudden got, I'm sorry, five state houses all of a sudden flipped. Yeah. The, I mean, the numbers, the numbers and the progressive possibility are there. Mikey, I'm curious to ask you because there are Democrats and progressives in this country who've been waiting for the moment when they had some shred of power to push back on Donald Trump, political power to push back on Donald Trump. And now, thanks to people like you, Democrats have it in the House. Some of those Democrats and progressives are bloodthirsty. They want, they want to make up for the last couple of years. Some of them want impeachment. Uh, is that something you would vote for if it came up? You know, I... I don't think that's the way forward. I have to say that I, I know that they're they're ready for change, and I think that's exactly what we need. We have got to get to work on good legislation. I think that is the most powerful thing we as Democrats could do, is get Congress back to work. And I think what Mickey's really touching upon is this idea that one of the reasons so many people came out in this wave election is because they want the government to work. They wake up every single day to the president's tweets, and it literally gives them heartburn. Yep. They want some yeah. sort of stability once again. So the fact that we have so many veterans coming in, so many sensible women coming in, I think we're actually going to see a different Congress. Well, New Jersey Congressman-elect <laughs> Mikey Sherrill, Congresswoman-elect Mikey Sherrill, thank you very <laughs> thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I bet you got four very proud kids at home, <laughs> proud of their mommy. And a husband, for sure. Three proud ones, one. Oh, amazing. One six-year-old. Congratulations. There's always All right, Maria, thank you as well for thank being you. on. What thank a night you. it was. I Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.